Ladies, here he is, Miss, Mr. Arthur Godfrey. A day late, but here he is. You know what happened. The little girls that were on the show in your place said, oh, we just love Mr. Godfrey because because if he wouldn't have been able to make it, you know, then, then we wouldn't have been able to be on. Well, I wish we could have. We tried so hard to get a hold of Mr. Mouse. I even took the, the name of Mr. Cat to see if I could catch him. <laughs> No, we're sorry. That you, but a day late, that isn't, that isn't too bad. How, how have you been, anyway? Very well, thank you. Well, you look yes. marvelous. I feel good, yes. Now, this show is really um, a catchy show. It doesn't just take me along. I haven't seen it, but I've heard a lot about it. What it's about a you? Eugene O'Neill play, Our Wilderness. That's a music by Robert Merrill. And uh, very, very clever, very entertaining. There's something in it for everyone. People... Any kind of person can identify with somebody in it, which is the secret of a good play. You, O'Neill, you know, was a master of that. How about Vivian Blaine? Have you worked with her before? No, I never have, to my great regret. I wish I had many times before, and I hope I will again and again. She is a doll and a great, great actress. We have to explain to you that Vivian Blaine is at the hairdresser's and can't join us for this little visit. <laughs> Ladies have to have their hair done. Yes, yeah, <laughs> she has more problems with that hair. Well, listen, in the summertime, it's difficult, though. That's exactly right. All the girls do the same thing. The kids in the, in the dancing line are the ones that have the fun. You know, they just put falls on and take them off and throw them away. <laughs> well, you know, that's our modern age. <laughs> we have to have a few little secrets. But now tell me. What's your secret? How do you keep going? You know, you really lead a fast, hectic pace. I don't have a fall. You don't have a fall. <laughs> no, but how, well, what keeps you? What, what's the drive behind? Arthur what keeps Godfrey? you going is mm -hmm. doing different things all the time. Just self-discipline. That's the way I know to do it. Don't let yourself down too far, you know? Keep, mm -hmm. Like your father-in-law says, <laughs> sit up there. Sit up there. That's my father. <laughs> no, we exercise every day, and he watches me, and he'll always say, you know, sit up, sit up straight, throw your shoulders back. And I think it's um, it's a pretty good suggestion, I think, you know, to keep changing, to keep doing something. Yeah, if you sit like this a long time, you don't exercise your lungs, right. you know, and you don't get the air in there where you should. And then I do a lot of aero, aero, aerobics, aerobics. Oh, yes, yes, this is Did renewed. you read this? Yes. Oh, man, I've been doing that for a long time. That's very good for you. Gets oxygen down where you need it. So many times when we breathe, we truly don't get enough oxygen. Oh, no. We don't, we don't use a third of the lungs. I'm missing one lung, you know, yes. 10 years now. And uh, it's amazing how, how uh, well you can get along even without that. Um, when I do heavy exercise, I puff like a steam engine, and people who are not used to it think, oh, my Lord, he's dying. Mm -hmm. But it's just because I get out of breath quickly. But it works. I do that. I have two lungs. Uh, Mr. Godfrey, what do you have planned after you leave Dayton? After we leave Dayton, go back to New York and go back to work on my radio show, two shows a day, and so I can get ahead again because I go into rehearsal in St. Louis for a showboat the last week in July, opening the first week in August, and then Kansas City, and then I'll be through with the summer theater this year. I do some dressage exhibitions, uh, 19th of July, 19, 20, 21, in Canfield, Ohio. And then I do the Indianapolis State Fair, Indiana State Fair, followed by the Michigan State Fair, the last three days in August and the first three days in September. When do you get back to the farm? Weekend. And weekend? Yes. Yeah. And you fly your own plane? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes. Mr. Godfrey, let's talk a little bit about Irma Bombeck. You know, our gal, oh, we're so my, proud of Irma Bombeck. I love her. You always call uh, Centerville Action City. <laughs> 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 now, Irma's going to be on with you on Conversation Key. Centerville is yes. the town in the play. Oh, really? That's the town, name of the town in the play, yes. Was it renamed? Uh, no, no, it's been that, always was that. O'Neill chose that. Oh. Yeah, it's in Connecticut. But isn't Irma uh, Bombeck delightful? She is the most <laughs> delightful person. Yes, indeed. I have her as a guest on my radio show as often as she can come to New York. She knows that all she has to do is come. Well, you have to talk to her. She's, she's moving now. <laughs> this, is a, this is a very big deal. She's moving to Bellbrook. I wish everyone could find as much fun in life as she does. Irma thinks funny. She really does. And with her children, we have more fun comparing notes and, and you know, the laundry piling up <laughs> and, and how, how we manage with jobs. But uh, you'll have a good time with her this That's afternoon. That's her secret, you see, is that 
people identifying with what she does. That's it, right. And it makes people happy to do that. That's what's so nice about it. And people like Irma all over the country. It, you yeah. know, just because she's from Centerville, and of course we love her here. But like you say, no matter where they're from, they can identify with well, her. Well, it was the same way when I started in this business, you know, doing the shows the way I do. That's the first thing they said in New York. Well, that goes fine down there in Washington, but it won't go in New York. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they forget that New York is nothing in the world but a million little towns. Isn't that the truth? You were a good friend of uh, our president, Roosevelt, weren't you? Excuse me. Well, I had the privilege of knowing him quite well, yes. I knew uh, his wife, Eleanor, much better. She and I rode together a great deal. Oh, really? Yes. But uh, I knew the president. Now, you mentioned Washington, and this just came to my mind. Because yeah. we were in Washington. It's, it's, it's a real thrill, I think, being there. See, back in those days, the, the news department wasn't as stuffy as they are now. And occasionally they would call on guys like me to come and help them do certain functions, you know. And uh, the Roosevelt funeral was one that they asked me to come and do a station. I did uh, with a bank there at uh, Pennsylvania and uh, 15th Street. And uh, as a matter of fact, I didn't do many after that because I'd lost faith in myself as a reporter because I broke up during that thing. A lot of people have said that they didn't mind it because it was human. Well, maybe so, but reporters aren't supposed to do that, you know. Well, I, I don't know whether I agree or not because they are human. Sometimes you wonder. <laughs> Tell me about your family. They have, what, two daughters? No, sons? one daughter. One daughter and two sons. One daughter and two sons and uh, oh, uh, half a dozen grandchildren, I guess, yeah. Now, where are they all? All spread scattered out? around, some in San Francisco, some in Washington, some in North Carolina. I got a son back in uh, Chapel Hill. He went back to school. He decided he didn't know as much as he wanted to. Well, that's all right, isn't it? We never learn, I don't think. He's enough. a pilot, too. He teaches flying to the student body, uh, members of the student body down there at Chapel Hill. Do you have a lot of good friends here since you're so interested in aviation? This is the home of aviation. Oh, yes. Yes, they honored me here not too long ago, and I dedicated the Air Force Museum here. I slept in all 